Hey, what's up guys? It's Kaetsu here and today I'm going to bring you a tutorial on how to create a realistic star background using a procedurally generated texture in Eevee. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and delete my cube and my light source. I am going to make sure that I enable my screencast keys so that you can see what I'm doing here. There you go. Um, in addition, this is a little bit of a setup that I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm going to change the location and rotation of my camera. In order to do this, I uh, will go here into my item with N and I'm going to change the location to zero. The rotation of X, I'm going to use 90 degrees and zero on Y and Z. Now that I've done that, I can change my view to the camera view. Perfect. I'm going to change my viewport shading and I'm going to split my paint here so that I can have my viewport on the right and my notes to the left. I'm going to change the editor type to my shader editor and I'm going to change from object to world view. There you go. Perfect. All right. Now let's go ahead and start building our star background. Um, the way this will work is that I'm going to be or the approach that I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using a Voronoi texture. Um, in order to create the stars and I'm going to vary the scale and I'm going to vary also the uh, mapping of the stars in order to have uh, a different amount of colors and uh, different uh, star sizes. So make sure that you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. If you don't, just go ahead and to edit uh, preferences then go to note the search box search for node and here's the note wrangler make sure you have that checked once you've done that let's go ahead and add a color ramp i'm going to plug my distance to my factor and my color to my background color there you go and i'm going to go ahead and click ctrl t in order to create my mapping and my texture coordinate nodes lovely and I'm going to flip my color ramp. There you go. And now I can go ahead and uh, move my black slider here in order to get the uh, star size that I want. And also I'm going to increase my scale to 10. Let's go ahead and continue moving our slider here. Perfect. I think this, this is great. Perfect. Okay. Now, I want to have um different star colors so in order to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate my color ramp plug it in here and invert or flip my color ramp again just send my black to the left here i'm going to slide my white here and i'm going to change the color let's say to orange there you go perfect okay now that we have this set up right now we will just have to duplicate this several or a bunch of times and increase the change our star colors and also increase the scale in order to, uh, to start building up our, our um, star background. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm going to duplicate from our mapping up to the background here. I am going to create an add shader, plug it in here and plug my background to my shader here and finally plug my uh, generated texture coordinate to my vector over here now i can change my color let's say to a yellow and if you can see right now both the uh, orange and yellow are superimposed each other so in order to be able to see the different colors what what you can do is just play around with your rotation and you can see here that now we have two different set of stars we can randomize it a little bit just like so in order to create or have a different stars in our background okay, i think this looks pretty good right now and let's go ahead and duplicate this again I'm going to change my color to white. 
by decreasing the saturation, increasing the hue value, I'm going to add another add shader here. There you go. I'm going to plug my background to the shader. I'm going to plug my generated texture coordinate to my mapping node. And again, I'm going to fiddle with these rotation values in order to create my white stars. There you go. Now you can also uh, play with this uh, black slider in order to increase or decrease the amount, uh, the size of our stars. In this case, the, the orange one, there you go. And maybe a little bit of the yellow one, I'm gonna decrease it in size, there you go. Now that we have this, um, we can jump into the next layer uh, or, si or, or star sizes. So I'm going to duplicate all of this um, up to here. I'm going to duplicate all of, all of this. There you go. I will have to plug in my texture coordinate into my vectors. Just like so. And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to increase the size from 10, let's say to, uh, let's start with 40, I guess will be a good value here. Also, what you could do here in order to uh, avoid having to change all of these values one by one is that you can create a value node, oh, search for value. And you can plug this value here into your scale because the scales will be the same here. There you go. And here, and you can just type in 40 here. And I'm gonna do the same here as well, just to be consistent with the, with the notes. I like to have some note consistency here, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in my scale here. Oh. I'm going to plug in my scale here, erase this, and plug it here. And we said that this is going to be a scale 10. There you go. Now, uh, just as we did with this, we're going to add a, uh, some more add shader nodes here. And we'll, we'll keep on building. If you add this here, there you go. Now you can start seeing more stars. We're starting to generate our star background now. Let's add another add shader and another one here. And I'm gonna plug this here. I'm going to plug this here. There you go. And we're going to add a third layer, uh, increasing our scale again just for the most uh, more faint stars. So again, I'm gonna bring my texture coordinate node here. I'm gonna plug it into my vectors, into our mapping nodes. This goes here, this goes here, perfect. Um, we're going to add a couple more add shaders. I'm gonna bring it down. So it's gonna be one for this one. It's gonna be another one for this one. Oops. Another one for this one. And finally another one for this node here. There you go. And now we're going to ramp up our scale from 40, let's say to perhaps 100. There you go, perfect. Now, what you can do is start playing, now that we have our star field, we can adjust our notes a little bit just to make sure that um, we are showing, let's say, less stars here. Uh, this is our orange, bigger stars. Can decrease it a little bit right here. There you go, perfect. And now you can see we have, for instance, I think that there, are, um, the orange is kind of prevalent. So what you can also do is decrease the background 
for your different stars. Let's say 0.5, we can do a 0.8 for the yellow ones and we can do, let's say three for the white ones. And if I add some bloom, there you go. You can start, you, you, you'll start to get um, some really nice results. We can all actually decrease it a, a little bit more, I think uh, 0.2 and let's say 0.4 perhaps. I'm gonna do the same here. Let's do a 0.2, let's do a 0.4 here. Let's look again, there you go. Um, and we're gonna increase this to perhaps five. Let's decrease this to 0 0.05 perhaps, there you go. Uh, we can do a 0 0.5 maybe, and there you go. That's I would say that's pretty good right now. Perfect. All right. Now that we have our star field, the next thing that I would do is add some uh, background nebulosity. Um, that is also quite simple. In order to work with our background nebulosity, I'm going to add a noise texture. I am going to need a color ramp here. I'm going to steal and duplicate this background guy right here. And of course, our add shader node. There you go. And I'm going to plug this sucker right here into our add shader. Perfect, okay. Uh, I'm going to reset my color ramp with backspace. Perfect. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my black slider right here. Uh, I would say around there is pretty well. I'm going to increase my detail and a little bit of roughness, perhaps 0.6. And maybe some distortion. 0.05, there you go. And I'm just going to play a little bit with my color here. Let's add some kind of uh, pinkish hue and just decrease the background um, strength. Let's say 0 0.05 maybe, there you go. Nice, perfect. And I like to add another layer of um, nebulosity, perhaps with, instead of, um, of this pink, I might go with a little bit of um, uh, light blue. I'm going to add another add shader here. There you go. I'm just gonna bring it here. There you go. Uh, let's change this back to one temporarily just to um, get our texture right. Uh, for this one, I'm going to play a little bit with the, um, with the scale, perhaps make it a little bit more bigger, uh, decreasing the uh, detail a little bit. going here perfect um, and also if you want you can add a mapping node as well I'm going to delete this texture coordinate right here and I'm just going to um, plug it from this one I'm gonna take this one right here plug it here the reason being that um, we can also play a little bit with the rotation have a different kind of um, position of the nebulosity. I think that might be good. And um, also I'm going to decrease the amount of nev nebulosity there is a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to bring it back down so that it could be just a very subtle effect. There you go, perfect. Nice. And finally, 
the last thing that I want to tinker with right now is I am going to add just another background node. Plug it into an add shader here. And this will be in order to um, not make the sky completely dark. I can make a little bit more grayish and just decrease the strength here. Uh, let's make it 8.1 here. Yeah, I think that's pretty much right there. Okay, let's go ahead and view my, my scene right now. And there you have it, guys. As you can see here, this is pretty cool in order if you want to make nebulous or you can, if, if you think that the, the stars are still too big and you want to play a little bit more with that, um, just as I, as I mentioned, feel free to, uh, to work with the different uh, values and the strength of your, uh, your notes. So if, if you still think that this uh, white stars are too big, what you can do is either just decrease the uh, the notes a little bit more, just so that uh, you find a something that will be uh, suitable for you. Again, if you still think that these uh, yellow and and um, and white, uh, the yellow and the orange stars are still a little bit too noticeable, you can just decrease a little bit more and make it um, less uh, like in your face. So I'm going to decrease a little bit more. There you go. Perfect. I think that that looks pretty neat. And there we have it, guys. That is the tutorial on how to create a procedural star background um, in Eevee just with a few Voronoi uh, notes and color ramps. I hope you like this video. If you do, please go ahead and like. Uh, I'm going to be uploading uh, a different set of videos uh, related uh, generally on uh, astronom ast astronomy or astrophotography. Um, I have a, I've been working with a, a planetary nebula uh, that is also uh, procedural, procedurally generated with EV. Uh, so please uh, uh, expect that video to be uploaded soon. And again, thank you very much for, watch for watching. My name is Ketsu. Have a great time.